on fishing television shows, including ours, we talk a lot about getting kids involved in the sport. It's very important to get that next generation involved and to give them something constructive to latch on to. On this week's episode, we're going to give you some tips and pointers that will help you do just that because Fox Sports Outdoors is on the air right now. You're watching the only program with weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the Southwest region. This is Fox Sports Outdoors. Hey everybody, glad you're with us for this week's episode. It is vitally important that we teach kids how to fish, but there are some principles that you can employ that will help you successfully get them interested. One of those is to choose the right species, and one of those species is catfish. Catfish are prolific, they're available, they're easy to catch, they're fun, and maybe best of all, they're tasty to take home and eat. So on this week's show, we're going to show you some principles, show you the gear and a few techniques that will help you catch catfish on a lake or river or creek right near your home. And to help us demonstrate that, I'd like to welcome you in to beautiful Squaw Creek Lake. It's near Glen Rose, Texas, and it is loaded with catfish. Mostly channel cats, they're not big, but they're fun to catch, and there are a few blue cats mixed in as well. We're gonna take the Tracker Pro Team 195 40th Anniversary Edition out on Squaw Creek today, rig up our gear, and give you some principles that will help you locate and catch catfish near you this coming weekend. And while we're doing that, we're taking you around your region for this week's fishing reports from our local insider reporters from lakes, rivers, and bays right where you live. Right now, the 40th anniversary edition, Pro Team 195 goes down the boat ramp. We get things started back at the FSN studios with your weekend planner. The Salooner tables are predicting fair game fish activity for both days this weekend. Peak morning hours should begin at 847 on Saturday and 934 on Sunday. And look for the best evening action to take place a little bit after sunset. Expect the sun to rise at 634 and set at 833. And the moon will be 69% visible. Hang with us for freshwater and coastal information from around the region. Plus, 2016 Bassmaster Angler of the Year, Gerald Swindle joins us for this week's Ask the Pro segment. We're coming right back. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Lou's. Feel the difference. Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland. We know bass and crappie from heads to tails. Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama. Plan your fishing vacation and catch the details at orangebeach.com slash fishing. And by Glacier Glove. Stay outdoors longer with our gloves, hats, and shades. If you're going to catch catfish in the warm weather months, they will still get shallow, especially the channel catfish. Hey everybody, welcome back. We do have the boat launched. We're out on Squaw Creek Lake right now and uh, we're actually off to a pretty good start. We've already caught several fish. Now you haven't seen them yet, but here's the deal. We caught a pretty good one earlier this morning when the sun was a little lower and I want to show it to you, but we had a couple of microphone problems, had some audio problems. So you're looking at a fish I caught up shallow around some bait on a slip bobber. And uh, I finally got this fish up in the boat and the audio went back to working again. So we, we'll rejoin it here. But early, the fish were shallow on bait and we'll explain what that means and what you can do to catch some. Well, there you go. There's a channel cat right there, slip bobber. A piece of earthworm. And there you go. There's a start right there. Well, if you're going to catch catfish in the warm weather months, they will still get shallow, especially the channel catfish. Don't be afraid to fish shallow. I had a slip bobber here. There's my bobber stop right there. And there is my slip bobber. So when it hits the bottom, I've got a little piece of split shot on there. The weight pulls the bobber down and then hits against that bobber stop. And I've got it about two and a half, almost three feet, something like that. And fishing a long structure here. Catfish will tend to get up a long structure, um, especially channel cats. Blue cats, not so much. Flatheads, not so much. But channels will get under docks, on bridge piers and pilings, on stumps, on grass beds, 
Hey friends, Captain Kevin Broussard here with your Fox Sports Outdoor Report. We're talking Louisiana. We're going to start off on the freshwater side. I tell you what, up at Toledo Bend, pretty good bass action going on. Mostly early and late and even a lot of good fish getting caught at night. Tell you what, at night, throw a black spinner bait or a buzz bait up shallow next to the bank around a little bit of the pepper grass or even if you can find some moss. Tell you what, daytime, early morning, late evening, fish to points. 12 to 20 feet of water, Carolina rig or Texas rig. 10 inch old monster worm seems to be doing the trick there. On the saltwater side, tell you what, if you can catch it calm out there, all along the whole Louisiana coast right now, lots of trout at the close rigs. I tell you what, if you're a snapper person, you can venture out a little bit further, red snapper action is on fire right now. Tell you what, Captain Kevin Bruce Hart saying happy fishing, may God bless, and we're gonna see y'all next week. I hit it. There he goes. He got it. Little channel cat. <laughs> well, I tell you, it's a lot of fun. Let me tell you something cool about catfishing is that kids are out. It's summer right now, summer vacation. And uh, this is something that doesn't involve a lot of skill as far as being able to cast and use a lot of gear. If you can literally hold a rod, you can catch catfish. So really all I have to do right now is just lower it to the bottom. I'm on a ledge, I'm on a creek channel. You do want to get on some kind of structure. You don't want to just be on a three foot flat for a mile. Get on some kind of a drop off, a creek channel, river channel, something like that. And I don't like to let mine lay on the bottom. So I pull it up off, I let it go to the bottom, pull it up off the bottom, and I just hold it a foot or two off the bottom. Most people think that catfish are strictly bottom feeders, and that is not true. They feed up and down the water column and uh, most of the time, the catfish are actually up a little bit off the bottom. So I like to hold it a foot or two off. And if you can just put it in the kid's hand, let him sit there and hold a rod, and then one of them will pull that rod tip down, and it can be a real blast. More catfishing for you coming up. Stay with us. Everyone's got it. Oh, I like it when they bite it and swim off with it. Almost straight down. Let him eat it. Take out the slack. Is he still there? Yep, he's got it. There we go. There's a good catfish. It's a good eating size fish. If you were going to eat him right there, uh, 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 and I knew he was going to do that. You really don't want to hold him by the line. There we go. And he still got my hook in his mouth. Well, let me tell you what's happened here. You saw me catch some fish early this morning up shallow with a slip bobber rig and all those shad, all the bait fish were right up on the surface real shallow. But what's happened now is the sun's gotten almost directly up overhead and these fish have moved down and I'll show you why. So what's happened is the bait has migrated down. Sun goes up, it gets bright, the bait goes down, the catfish go down. So I'll show you, this is my Lowrance Hook 2 unit. It does a great job. A Hook 2 is a great entry-level graph at an entry-level price with many of the features of the higher-end Elite TI and HDS units that Lowrance makes. But as you can see, that is solid shad, solid bait fish all underneath our boat. We're only in eight to 10 feet of water. You get around that bait, you're gonna be around catfish because most people think they just suck stuff up off the bottom. Not true, they'll chase shad around just like a bass will. So you find the bait, you find it looking like that on your hook two unit, you will find catfish and we've definitely found a little pot of them right here. Hey, by the time we hit this last half of July here in Oklahoma, we're pretty well settled into a normal summertime fishing pattern. For something different, try the saw guy fishing at Lake Thunderbird. You can catch that species right now by targeting points and rocks, throwing a lift crankbait, smaller size that'll run about six to nine foot deep and also on some soft plastics. Now the trout fishing below Tin Killer Dam in the lower Illinois River is actually really good right now. The water is murkier than normal and that makes for better fishing and you can catch that species on power bait and artificial. The striper fishing at Lake Texoma is really good. Now you have some schooling activity going on early and late in the day but throughout the day, you can catch those fish by targeting the larger schools that are roaming the flats and the points near the main river channels, looking for those fish on your sonar. 
Now, one of my favorite ways to do this is vertical jigging, and I like a white bucktail. I like to put the LaRue Sweet Swimmer in monkey milk color on it. Half ounce to three quarter ounce size, and you're dropping right down into those schools and jigging it there. Another good option, of course, is just your regular Sweet Swimmer in a shad color variation, and again with a quarter to half to three quarter ounce jig head on. Lots of fun catching those stripers time of year. The weather's hot, the fishing is too, and you can catch them, but you can't catch them if you don't go. This one's got it. Oh, I like it when they bite it and swim off with it. Yes, he got it. There we go. That one there. Well, there's a, another great side benefit of catching catfish is to get to eat them here in Texas. I think the limit is 10 inches minimum and 25 per person. If it's not that, I'll put it up on the screen as a correction. But let me tell you another cool thing about catfish is that uh, you don't really even have to have a boat to catch them. You can catch these catfish around the shorelines of lakes all throughout the southeast and southwest right now. These fish will stay shallow year round. You can catch them at night. Nighttime is a great time to go catfishing. Just really uh, public lakes, catfish are just very prolific. Get those kids, get them out, catch some catfish, and uh, get the right gear. You need the right gear to do this with, but they will bite a variety of baits. I'll tell you about all the different kinds of baits you can use to catch them at the end on the gear segment as well. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Motor Guide's new wireless and easy to use XI3. XI batteries powering the world forward. Waypoint Marine, the Gulf Coast's leading saltwater boating specialist. And Strike King, designed by the pros, fished by you. And we are getting bit one right after next. Hey everybody, we're teaching you how to take your kids catfishing this summer. Any of the warm weather months, these catfish will be up shallow. And uh, man, we are getting bit one right after next. It's not a big one at all. It would be a, it would definitely be a keeper. But uh, here's the deal. If you do have a boat, you know, we talked about the fact that you can catch these fish off the shore and off a dock, especially these channel cats like this. But what if you do have a boat? You launch on a great big old lake and it's like a needle in a haystack. How do you know where to fish, where to find catfish? Well, there is a little key to it. They're not just everywhere. You need to find a place with what I call some character, which means some bottom change. It can be a long point that runs out in the lake and drops off into deep water. I really love creek channels. In fact, I wanna show you a little shot of what the area that we're fishing looks like. It's a main river channel and it's got sharp edges. It's only about four feet on the sides and drops to about 12, 13 feet in the channel. That's perfect, but it's got to be something that's got some depth contour. It can be a hump that comes up off the lake, but it's got to be something that has depth change and preferably some cover around it. They like to get around some kind of cover. The last thing I'll mention is chum. It's good for especially channel cats if you chum an area. You can use soured maize. You can just throw out a couple of cupfuls. People tend to over chum. Don't put too much in the water. You'll overdo it quickly and the fish won't bite your line. So put a couple of cups of chum over the edge. They'll come pretty quickly. 15, 20, 30 minutes is all you need to wait. And the other last thing I'll mention is don't get locked to one spot, move. If you don't get a bite in 30 minutes, move. Repeat the process, start over, try it again, move from spot to spot until you do it. Hi folks, this week's Lone Star Lakes is brought to you once again by the good folks at Fiberworks Marine Collision. Not only will they fix your boat, but they're not going to give it back until the work is done right. Now this week we're going to talk about some hot summer fishing, starting with Cedar Creek Lake and the sand bass. These fish will school in massive groups and they'll herd bait fish to the surface and feed voraciously. Now you want to look for main lake humps and or fish around the islands toward the base of the island. And you can throw things like your slabs in chrome or chartreuse, but be sure and have a topwater, maybe a baby torpedo or a small popar with a feather trailer handy for when those fish surface. And another great lure for surfacing schooling fish is actually a tail spinner. 
you can chunk it a country mile and then rip it across the top. Those fish will hit it. Now, night fishing over at Purtis Creek is some of the best you'll ever find, and you only need three baits. You're going to want a black buzz bait, a black spinner bait with a Colorado blade, and a 10 inch worm in red shad, black blue, or a blue fleck color. You'll fish the water column from top to bottom out to about eight feet deep around the timber and around the island in the back of the lake, and you'll catch plenty of good Purtis Creek bass. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes, brought to you once again by Fiberworks Marine Collision, when good enough just isn't good enough. Be sure and check us out, Lone Star Lakes, on Facebook. Hi, I'm Captain Joey Farrer for your South Texas Region Report. Brought to you by Waypoint Marine, Marker 37 Marina and Boat Ramp, Waterloo Rods and DOA Lures. Hey, this week we're going over two different techniques that are solid set in late summer patterns. We're drift fishing the flats with a live pin perch about two feet under a popping cork hitting those scattered sand pocket areas in three to four feet of water. Also, the side of the intercoastal. Now that the water's hot, fish are going deep, staying in that moving water along the edge of the intercoastal. My favorite technique this time of year is sight casting for reds, which is some of the most exciting fishing you can do in shallow saltwater. Some of our favorite baits is the half and quarter ounce DOA shrimp. This fire tiger is my favorite color. You can see the orange on it, and that's the first color those redfish see when a crab comes up to attack. So this is a really good bait. Next, if you can't get that spot on cast, Long cast downwind with a gold weedless spoon. This creates a lot of flutter, a lot of vibration in the water. Redfish cannot resist it. You guys follow all of our hookups on Facebook at Captain Joey Fair's Backwater Fishing. You can always watch our latest episode on the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Catch up on past episodes by clicking the archive button and learn about fishing techniques and new gear at our how-to page. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter for new fishing videos every day. Simply search for Fox Sports Outdoors and click the like button on Facebook and follow button on Twitter. And watch a new episode every week on any device by downloading the free Waypoint TV app on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Nitro Performance Fishing Boats. Champions aren't born, they're made. Mercury Outboards, Go Boldly, and Lowrance, and the new Hook 2, the world's easiest fish finder. Welcome back everyone, it's time for the Ask the Pro segment, where viewers get expert answers from fishing's premier competitors. This week's question comes from Sarah who asks, what are some suggestions for learning how to back a boat trailer? For the answer, we checked with two-time Bassmaster Angler of the Year, Gerald Swindle. To be honest with you, when people talk about backing a boat trailer, because everyone knows my wife Lulu travels with me and she pulls the rig 99% of the time, and they watch her back the boat and they're like, man, you taught that woman amazing. I said, no, I didn't teach her. I said, the key with, with learning to back a boat trailer is don't wait to the last second to jump out of the truck and go, hey, hun, back the truck in. Don't do it to her, because it's unfair to her because she hadn't got to practice. If, when my wife wanted to learn to back the truck, the first thing I did, I said, all I ask you to do is never look over your shoulder, only use your mirrors, and I went fishing. I said, you got the whole parking lot and all day, I'll be back tonight. And I let her sit out in the parking lot and do it back and forth, because me and a man standing in the parking lot telling her kid or the wife, hey, back up, turn left, turn right, you just confuse her and make her nervous. Just let her do it and don't say a word. I think so many people want to get out and coach them, and it's confusing. I think people are, are instinctive. When they see the boat trailer, they'll figure it out. So my whole deal when I see people at the ramp yelling at their wife and all, all you're gonna need is a divorce court because you're not gonna teach her to back a boat. And most of the time it's unfair to the woman or the child to do it because they hadn't had a lot of practice. Get them in an open parking lot and say, go with it. Pull it around and around, back it up, round and around, back it up. Thanks, Gerald. If you have something to ask one of our fishing superstars, visit the Fox Sports Outdoors homepage online and follow the Ask the Pro link to submit your question. Now it's time to see who wins our Big Catch of the Week contest. We are back at the boat ramp and it's time right now for this week's winner in the Big Catch of the Week contest. Someone gets their big fish photo shown on television. She is Michelle Leonards of Crowley, Louisiana showing off a 50-pound black drum she caught at Lake Calcasieu, Louisiana. 
If you'd like to send in your big fish photo, we could use it on television. Just go to our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com, click on the Big Catch of the Week area on the right side of the homepage, and follow the instructions to send us your big fish photo. Next up, here's some of the gear that you'll need to catch these catfish where you live, beginning with the correct rod and reel. For little kids, a spin cast rod and reel will work perfectly. Then they graduate to spinning gear, a spinning rod and spinning reel, like the matched, loose, mock crush combo that I was using today. It's orange in color. It's the perfect weight, the perfect size, the perfect everything to catch this size catfish that we were catching today. I had that reel spooled with eight pound test fluorocarbon line. You can use eight or 10 pound test monofilament line as well. Now, as far as how you rig it, again, it's very simple. This is a mini Carolina rig. I just pinched a little one eighth ounce split shot about one foot in front of a one aught size bait hook. That will catch catfish almost anywhere. Now, as far as the bait goes, you can use a lot of different baits. You can go to your local sporting goods store or even a Walmart or Academy and buy some earthworms. You can go to the grocery store and buy chicken livers. You can buy frozen bait shrimp. You can go catch shrimp if you live near the coast and use those. Most anything that smells bad to you will smell good to a catfish. I spend a lot of time driving on our highways across our states in the southeast and southwest. And the other day, I was driving out on the road and a car was cutting in and out of traffic, weaving back and forth. He ultimately cut in front of me, cut me off, and then zigzagged his way through the cars ahead. But you know what? When we got to town, got to the red light, we were side by side. I have a belief about drivers like that. They're really not in that big a hurry. They just live their lives that way. Frantic drivers many times live frantic lives, but we're both going to get there at the same time anyway, but your blood pressure is just gonna be higher than mine if you live and drive like that. So why not just slow down, relax, take a couple of deep breaths and enjoy the scenery because it's all going to be okay. I hope you enjoyed our trip today to Squaw Creek Lake outside Glen Rose, Texas, and special thanks to Billy and Jimmy and Nathan and all the guys that accommodated us here and so kind to let us in and let us get at these catfish. And I hope you learned some tips and some tactics and learned about some gear that will help you get those kids away from the video games and out in the outdoors and fishing, yes, beginning this coming weekend. Hey, go catch some catfish. And don't forget to sign up for our free email newsletter. Go to our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Right in the middle of the homepage, click on free email newsletter. Give us your email address. We won't give it to anybody else. You won't get any spam because of us. But what you will get is lots of fishing information each and every week. We'll see you next week. Until then, I'm Barry Stokes. Be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.